Welcome to the Spirit Filled Leadership Podcast. I'm Pete Burak. Miguel's behind the camera. We're ready to go because this is a podcast where we believe the world needs disciples and disciples need spirit filled leaders. We've done lots of episodes and we're going to continue to do more, but ever so often we need to regularly go back to that doesn't make sense. Every so often and regularly, we just need to regularly go back and look at the first part of what this podcast implies, not just the leadership piece, but the spirit filled piece, because that's what's critical about why we're doing this. We're not just talking about leadership in the abstract. We're not just talking about the leadership in the way the world understands it, but spirit filled leadership with this expectation, this belief that as baptized Christians, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. The full power of God lives in our hearts through the outpouring of his spirit as we were baptized and confirmed into his family and into his body. And it's, we can't just like gloss over this. This is not just like a small piece of the puzzle. I mean, this is truly the power to be who we are called to be originates from an action of God now dwelling in our hearts that actually gives us the grace and the power, the insight, the charisms, the gifts, everything we need in order to become the Son, to live in the power of the Holy Spirit so much so that Jesus is alive in us, so much that at the end of our life, the Father sees the Son. I heard it once said that, and I don't know how, well, you know, theologically accurate this is in some ways, but the, that at the end of our life, when we stand before the Father, the Father's going to be looking down to see how much of the Son he sees in us. Interesting thought, huh? Are you, well, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. My Son is alive in you. You have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. You are now part of us, right? And so, um, yeah, and that, that action, that sanctification, that transformation is the work of the Holy Spirit. So if we're going to be spirit-filled leaders, we cannot ignore the spirit. And so what I want to offer you today is what I call a Holy Spirit audit, where we take a look and say, kind of ask ourselves the question, is the spirit alive in you today? Are you cooperating with the full grace of the power of Pentecost that has been given to you to sustain you, to transform you, to propel you, to, to purify you, and to get you moving? And the, the, the obvious answer to the question is like, no, of course, there's going to be places in our life where we are not cooperating with the Spirit. But with these five questions, or these five categories, it gives us a sense of where we should focus and where uh, the Holy Spirit might actually be um, lacking or lying dormant in our life. Because the fact of the matter is, too, the Spirit is there, but if we don't cooperate with the Spirit, or as Pope Francis says, if we cage the Spirit, then the power that is ours, the power that seeks to transform us, can lie dormant, can lie just kind of emptied by our own free will. So first thing, I want to give you five ways that you can kind of ask yourself, is the spirit lying dormant in my life? Or how do I become more alive in the Holy Spirit? So the first one is this. The Holy Spirit might be lying dormant in your life if every time you open up the Word of God, when you open up sacred scriptures, you think it's dry. It's boring. There's nothing there. Because the fact of the matter is, this is the inspired Word of God. This was written through the, the human authors, through the, the inspiration and direction of the Holy Spirit. The scriptures actually tells, calls itself the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. So if every time you open scriptures, it's dry and boring and no insight, probably that means that you, it's not a problem with scripture. Scripture is not the issue. It means that you, and I'll just say me, we're not cooperating fully with the power of the Spirit that's within us. And that's an easy solution. It's just to say, before you open up the scriptures, to say, come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead me to the passages that you want me to read. Give me the insights to understand them. Give me the conviction and the power to do something about it. It's as simple as that. And then my recommendation is you start to read the word. And as soon as something strikes you, as soon as something asks questions, as soon as something kind of pricks your heart, you pause and you say, Lord, what are you revealing here? One thing I want to say about reading scripture is that a lot of times Catholics are intimidated by scripture. We're intimidated because, oh, I don't have a degree. I don't, how am I supposed to interpret it? Or how am I, what if if I get something wrong? Or what am I supposed to do? First off, there are literally 2,000 years of commentaries and and explanations and understandings of what is happening in the scripture. So you can find a source to help you explain it. But secondly, the, the church teaches that because of the spirit living within you, you have the ability to understand, to be transformed by it. We shouldn't all go around as our own little mini magisterium, but in the private of your home, in your own prayer time, absolutely you should enter into uh, the, the, the word with expectation that God is going to speak and that you can understand and interpret what he's saying. But if the scripture is intimidating or the scripture is dry, it probably means you're, you're letting the spirit lie dormant in your life right now. So that's number one. Number two, 
if the fruits of the Spirit are missing, what are the fruits of the Spirit? Let's look to, at Galatians 5. <clears throat> Now, the works of the flesh, he goes through those, blah, 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 blah. But I warned you as I warned you before, those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's another topic for another time. We should probably go through the works of the flesh at some point as a spiritual leader and be like, hey, don't do these things, okay? But here are the fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So it's a, it's a pretty obvious question, like, are you loving? Are you joyful? Are you peaceful? Are you patient? Are you kind? Are you good? Are you faithful? Are you gentle? Do you have self-control? I don't. Certainly not all of them. Certainly not all the time. And if these are the fruits of the Spirit, what that's indicating is that the Spirit is lying dormant or that we are not co cooperating with the grace that we have through Him to, to be these things, to live this way. It can be kind of an intimidating list. You could look at me like, Pete, I'm like none of those things. I'm occasionally good, maybe. Occasionally faithful. <clears throat> but man, the rest of that list is is brutal. Yeah. So my recommendation would be to, to enter into a prayer time and say, Holy Spirit, which fruit do you want me to pursue? Which one do you want me to, to be born in me? Which seed of this fruit needs to be planted, watered, and grown so that I can see the fruit in my life? And the reason I would limit it to one or two is because if you actually start to pursue and allow the Lord to help you be more loving, guess what? You're going to be more patient. And or if you say, Lord, help me to just be more joyful, to accept whatever is brought upon me and to offer you my sufferings. If you're more joyful in the midst of a suffering, what do you think you're also going to be? You're going to be way more good. <laughs> you're going to be way more kind. You're going to be have way more self-control. When we work and allow one of the fruits to grow, all of the fruits grow. But it's all an action of the Spirit that we cooperate with. So, sacred scripture is dry. You see no fruits. That's number two. Number three, indication that the Holy Spirit might be lying dormant in your life is if you have apathy towards sin. Another way to put that is if you are kind of okay with some of the sin in your life, especially really serious sin. We are kind of like, yeah, I mean, that's not that bad. You know, like, and it's interesting that the the list uh, right before the fruits of the spirit gives you some indication of the things that the spirit wants to burn out of us. Now, the works of the flesh are plain immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. It's kind of like what Paul is basically saying is what I'm saying here is, hey, we need to allow the fruits of the spirit to be born in us, and we need to cooperate with the grace to do so. But we also have to be serious about allowing the Spirit to burn out and purify and eliminate <clears throat> repeated habitual sin. Because the Holy Spirit is holy. I know, that's a shocking statement. The Holy Spirit is holy. So if the temple of our hearts is his dwelling place, then his holiness is incongruent with evil, with sin. And so part of what the Spirit wants to do in us is make our temple ever more radiant, ever more a proper dwelling place for him, a the holy of holies that that expels sin, that expels evilness, that dispels um, unruly passions, that, that purifies our desires. And so if we find ourselves kind of like lukewarm or apathetic towards sin, it means probably that we're allowing the spirit to lie dormant and we're not cooperating with the grace to be vigilant. We're not cooperating with the grace to be convicted. We're not cooperating with the grace to be zealous in going to war over our hearts, to bringing the sword of the Spirit into our hearts to say, I am I want to cut off, I want to prune, I want to do battle with anything that is not of God. That conviction is not really a natural human disposition. It's a gift from the Lord. It's a, it's a power source that comes from the Spirit living within us to say, I need to do something about this sin. And if the sin in your life is just kind of like, oh yeah, I still do that. And I probably shouldn't. It probably means the Spirit's lying dormant in your life. Okay. Sacred Scripture is dry. You see no fruits. Apathy towards sin. Fourth indication that the Spirit may be lying dormant in your life is if you feel like you've had no opportunities to share the gospel with anyone. Here's the reason. I would be shocked 
And I think I would bet a lot of money. And I would say there's probably no chance that uh, you're going through your life and there are no opportunities to talk about Jesus. And if you're saying like, no, Pete, I, I just haven't seen any. What it says to me is that you just haven't seen them. You haven't been aware of them. Your heart hasn't been tuned to the person in front of you. The spirit, the still small voice of the spirit has been quenched or has been shut down and you're not listening to the voice of the Lord in those moments when he's asking you to say something, do something, react to something, answer something. That is a Holy Spirit inspired moment because the Holy Spirit is the protagonist of evangelization. The making of disciples, he's the key player. I mean, he works through us and he invites us into us, but we're the supporting cast. He's the one who sets the the moment. He's the one who prepares the hearts of the listener. He's the one who gives us the words to speak. He's the one who gives us the conviction to speak them. He's the one who brings about the fruit. And so it only makes sense that if we're not seeing evangelistic moments, we're not cooperating in those evangelistic moments, we're not aware of evangelistic moments, it's probably not because he's not working, because we know for sure he's working. He's pursuing every single person that we meet. Every single person you meet today is being passionately pursued by the Lord. Their salvation is at stake. And Jesus knows it, and he does not rest until everyone is home. He wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And he is battling and battling and battling up until the moment of our death. The Spirit is moving. And so if we're not aware of it, again, it's not the Spirit's fault. It's our fault in not paying attention and not cooperating and not asking for more. So if you're not seeing any evangelistic opportunities, saying, yeah, man, I'd love to share about the gospel. It just never seems like I have a chance. Again, probably because the Spirit's lying dormant in your life. And then number five, and I want to be careful here. Um, we don't we don't pursue the Lord so that He does crazy cool things that we can point to. Like that's not why we do it. But if you don't see any power in your life, if you're not having any tangible external expression of God moving in your life. I would say that might be a red flag to say maybe the spirit's lying dormant in my life. So again, we're not pursuing like physical healings for the sake of physical healings. We're not like cooperating with the charisms or like a word of knowledge or, uh, you know, a prophetic word or kind of trying to do something so that we can say like, wow, wasn't that cool? And so we can feel good. We're not in this for the feel goods. We're not in this for the headline. We're not in this for the dramatic moment. At the same time, the scripture's full and bears witness to that like, when the people of God walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, tangible things happen. The Spirit of God moves because we're not just souls and we're not just bodies. We're bodies and souls. And so it only makes sense that when God is moving and doing something in the hearts of his people, that there would be an internal reality and there would be an external reality. Not all the time. Not in a way that if, like, Oh shoot! I I haven't healed anyone in a while. That means something's wrong. No, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. What I'm suggesting though is that if there's no power, if there's no freedom, if there's no tangible, wow, I see God moving. If none of that is happening in your life, I would I'd say that's a red flag that maybe the spirit's lying dormant. Because what we see in Scripture and we see throughout the history of the church is that when the people of God cooperate with the Spirit, He tangibly moves and transforms hearts internally. But that internal transformation very often accompanies some sort of external transformation as well so holy spirit audit sacred scripture is dry you're not seeing any fruit you have apathy towards sin you don't see any evangelistic opportunities and you're not living with any power if any of those are present it's a very very simple solution repent say lord i'm sorry for the ways that i haven't cooperated with you i'm sorry for the ways that i've ignored you i'm sorry for the ways that i've relied on myself instead of you and then just say lord i want more I give you full permission. Holy Spirit, come alive in me. Do what Paul told Timothy. Fan into flame the gift of the Spirit that you receive with the laying on of hands. You who are baptized and confirmed have received the Holy Spirit. That's not a question. But the Spirit is waiting. He's patient. He's kind of that, that gentleman, right? Waiting to be given permission to move in the ways that he wants to move in your life. And as a spirit-filled leader, we should be oh, daily convicted and preoccupied with saying, Lord, everything I am, everything I want to be, all of my insight, all of my power, all of my gifting comes from you. And I want more of whatever you want for me. So come, Holy Spirit, have your way. So let's just close with that. Come, Holy Spirit. 
move in our hearts. Help us to be truly transformed by you, to be led by you, to be empowered by you. And Holy Spirit, we give you full permission to tr- transform us and to transform our leadership. Amen. This has been the Spirit Filled Leadership Podcast. I'm Pete Breck. If you've liked this, you know that we're coming up in two weeks. Every Wednesday morning, you can expect a new episode of the Spirit Filled Leadership Podcast. If you've liked this, you need to share it, rate it, comment, send it to somebody else. Follow us on Instagram at SFL Podcast or Intentional Disciples. Yeah, I think that's all. Any other announcements? No? I think we're good. Good stuff. Stay tuned. We got more things coming down the pike in the whole kind of ecosystem of Renewal Ministries and ID in terms of podcasting and videos. So just stay tuned because we got some pretty exciting things coming down the track. And uh, we'll be praying for you. Please pray for us. We'll see you next time. God bless. Come.